Greetings sailors and happy pride month! My name is Octodron and welcome to my YouTube video. I want to do something special for this month, but I needed to figure out what to actually do. I decided to do what I know best, combine two random interests of mine. In this case, I'm looking at different types of fish and some octopi and seeing how brunness is displayed in them. Before I get started, I want to clarify some things. For most of these, I tried to find academic evidence for whichever identity slash behavior I was looking for in that particular design. However, two are just kind of picked for the color scheme that matches the flag. I plan on talking about those identities in the animal kingdom in general, though. This leads to my next point, the difference between LGBTQ plus behavior in animals and in humans. For example, a gay animal is defined by its actions, whereas a gay, like, person is defined by their identity. I'm not sure how animals, specifically fish, think of the concept of self, let alone their role in society. And even if they did do that, there isn't really a way for me to ask them, so... <laughs> Behavior also affects human sexuality, but it doesn't define it. For instance, a closeted lesbian woman might be in a committed romantic relationship with a man for 40 years and still be exclusively attracted to women, and view herself as a lesbian. The main thing of importance is self-identity. The goal of this video isn't to, like, call these animals queer in, like, the human way, if that makes sense, but, like, to show similarities in our experiences to ones in nature especially when people try to tear us down by saying how the way we live is unnatural. Also, this video is meant for entertainment purposes only. I recognize that I am not a scholar in any way in biology or anthropology. I'm just an idiot on the internet who skimmed some articles about fish. All the sources I use will be available in the works cited page linked in my description. Who? With all that out of the way, let's dive right in. In 1993, a submersible recorded the first video evidence of two deepwater octopi mating. There were two strange things about this, though. One, the two octopi seemed to be of completely different species, and two, they were both males. That's right, we're starting this video off with gay octopus sex. This is a very serious YouTube channel. I take this seriously. <clears throat> the species of the two octopods was unknown when they were writing the article, but in some National Geographic segment, they interviewed one of the scientists about her findings. The problem is, I have no idea what she's saying. Is uh, a con specific, that is the same species as the white guy. I think I heard con specific. But I couldn't find any octopus with that name, so I just went with a giant Pacific octopus. I mean, it's not that one, but it's all I had to go off of. It's not like these octopi were confused or anything. Octopi are pretty smart and would be able to tell if their coupling would result in any hatchlings or not. Neither of the party seemed uncomfortable either. Um. So, in conclusion, gay octopus sex. Like if you agree. Next up, we'll look at how certain types of domestic fish form lesbian relationships. Specifically, I looked at the cichlid and based the art off of the dragon blood cichlid, because they are walking, or well, swimming, <laughs> lesbian flags. This information was gathered from forum posts and random blogs, so it's um, a bit less credible than other sources in this video. Still, many domestic fish owners report their female fish doing mating rituals and, and depositing their eggs in the same place. There are many things written on this particular topic, so I don't really have much to say besides that. Now, let's move on to our bisexual icons, the Mexican Mollies. Female mollies prefer the larger and bolder males to the smaller, duller ones. In order to get the lady molly's attention, the smaller male will perform homosexual activities with the larger males. 
It's like similar logic to how two women make out to get the attention of a guy at like the club, I guess. Males who do that specific mating ritual with either males or females are more likely to get mates than the ones who don't. Up next are the lovely trans-masked bluehead wrasse. Now try saying that five times fast. Basically, bluehead wrasse live in groups of one male and several females, distinguished by the male's distinctive blue head. If one of these males is removed from the population, a dominant female will transition fully in appearance and sex cell production over the course of 20 days. Humphead wrasse also do a similar sex change when the male population goes down, but I'm gonna be honest, these guys are ugly. Like, I get these fish did not choose to look like this, but I didn't particularly want to draw them. I'm so sorry to any humphead wrasse fans in the chat. Forgive me. In the same vein, let's look at the trans femme clownfish. I wanted to do a fish that goes from male to female as well as a fish that goes from female to male because I want more people to feel included in this video. Also, I get to talk about more fish, which is always a plus. Clownfish are all born males and live in groups with one dominant female and one dominant male. If the female of the group dies or is removed, the male will transition into female and take the dominant role, with the second most dominant male becoming the primary male. It's kind of like the line of presidency in the United States, but if the president was the only woman in the country or something like that. The next sea animal is the first I based the drawing only on the appearance and not on the actual behavior or biology of the animal in question. I couldn't pass up the opportunity of making the blue ringed octopus into the intersex flag. I mean, look at it! From what I can tell, there's very little evidence of any octopus having hermaphroditic traits which is the way you refer to animals with multiple sex characteristics, and not how you should refer to intersex people. In a study of Patagonian red octopi, one individual with both ovaries and a penis was found. This is extremely rare and is a bit more similar to intersex people when compared to the other animals I'll talk about later, with two fully functioning sets of genitalia. Speaking of which, let's move on to that fish I was just talking about, the shy hamlet. They are one of 40 simultaneous hermaphrodite fish. During reproduction, these fish seem to not care whether they take the male or the female role and will mate with any other fish that's similar enough to them in the area. I chose this particular hamlet because of how its colors remind me of the non-binary flag. Okay, so with this one I made a bit of a mistake. The Amazon molly is commonly known as an asexual fish. When researching this video, I guess I didn't read the full article, teehee. I thought Molly is just like fertilize the eggs themselves, making it like a species entirely of clones. I mean, it is true all Amazon Mollies are essentially clones. They're still fertilized like any other fish egg, albeit with a fish from a different species. This DNA isn't used in the actual fish, but it does start the fertilization process. I thought it would be cool to highlight that an animal doesn't need a mate to reproduce, but uh, yeah. I mean, I'm sure there are some Amazon mollies that do not mate for whatever reason, but that's just conjecture. That leads me into my next section, aromanticism and animals. The line between romantic and sexual relationships is hard enough to navigate in human society, but with fish, you can, like, ask them to define their relationship. I think the way to define a romantic animal is if once they're done breeding, they, like, live solitarily and don't, like, hang out with their mates all the time. The fish I chose for aromanticism is the Kubutai Raspora, since it's gray and green. From what I've seen, they prefer to be alone when in captivity, but I didn't really have that in mind while doing research. I feel kind of bad that the arrow and ace fish are about half-ass since those are the groups I belong to. Oh well, I procrastinated on this video enough, I'm not gonna waste more time on research art and script writing. Maybe next year I'll redeem myself. Aside from that, I hope you all like this video. If I actually post this before Pride Month ends, I hope the rest of it goes well, and if not, keep feeling proud. You've d you're doing good. Good job.
Uh, yeah. And if there's any interest in the comments, I might open an online shop to sell these fishes stickers. With all that out of the way, don't forget to auto-like and subscribe. Bye-bye and best fishes.